Good morning, food foresters. Amy here. I am doing the kind of like my morning chore um, here in Florida or central Florida. It gets hot really quick during the summertime. So I'm going to take you along and show you what I do and talk to you all about why gardening, homesteading is a lot in Florida. Unlike other regions, um, we, uh, we have to deal with the heat, extreme heat and humidity. So even though it might be say like it's 92 outside, with the humidity, it's like 102. It got as high as last week, 108. And then trying to garden and keep up with everything, it's insane. And it didn't even rain. Now it's raining. So all the stuff that we didn't do during the heat because it was just too hot for us, now I still can't do because of the rain. So I am going to show you around also. We're gonna do a little garden tour, but you know, it's not easy for us in the South, especially the uh, people that are even further south, uh, further south than me. Farming, homesteading, gardening is a challenge. We have to select our plants that can tolerate not only the intense sun, but those occasions where we'll go a week or two with no water. We have to hand water everything. So, with that in mind, we also have those nasty, nasty, nasty um, thunderstorms that we deal with also. And it's, you know, with, with Florida, it's like, oh, it's not just a little rainstorm that comes through. You get some thunder or some lightning. You guys might get some wind, maybe a little bit of hail. We get storms that just pop up and it's full on tropical storm weather. Uh, just like now, um, it is, uh, what is today? It's July, July 6th. Today's July 6th. We just found out last night there is a possible tropical depression that's forming in the Gulf of Mexico and it's supposed to go through the state of Florida. Um, looks like it's coming in, skirting the, the Panhandle Coast and then going through what we call, us Floridians call, the armpit of Florida. That's that bend on the Gulf of Mexico side. If you think of Florida as an arm, it's that bend. Um, kind of like um, for people that live in that area, it's going to be like uh, Chiefland, Perry, um, a couple other ones, Ingalls. Um, it's going to be those cities over there. And then it's supposed to go across the state of Florida, which is fine. We need the rain. To be honest with you, after having temperatures in the 100s, we need the rain. We had no rain with those with those high temperatures. And um, we need the rain. We really do. It helps. And, uh, you know, for us, today it's supposed to be raining later this afternoon. But as you could tell, blue skies, a little bit of wispy clouds. Uh, for me, my house actually faces north. So right now, as I'm talking to you, you're looking south. What's behind me is south. In front of me is north. My house is to the west and then the rest of my stuff's to the east over here. So when these storms come in, they come in over here. That's the Gulf of Mexico for us. 
we're only an hour away from the Gulf of Mexico. So we're not, we're inland, but we're not that far inland. Um, my family lives over in that direction. <laughs> they live on the coast. Um, but the storms come this way for us. Now, if the storms are coming from the Atlantic side, they actually come over in this direction and go this way. And then the city, the city next to us is over here in this area, over in this area here. So that's kind of how I tell how these storms are going to be coming and going. So anyways, I am also going to show you a few things. So this video may be a little bit longer. I may break it up into a couple different videos, but right now I need to take care of all the animals. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and show you how all of our babies and new grow outs are doing. They're so cute still. Hold on. All right, as you know, this is our brooder, outside brooder. We, have, we haven't we have had anybody, no new animals inside uh, for a couple of weeks now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prop these guys open. So give me a minute and I'm gonna show you everybody on the inside. Okay, so that's how we have it propped open. This allows ventilation, allows us to gain access to them. Um, we do have the heater lamp right now. We don't need to worry about it because uh, they're all fully feathered. Now, in this grow out, we have the last of the turkeys. And I'm going to see if they'll behave enough. I can actually leave this open. One of the turkeys is having troubles walking, so we're not sure what we're going to do there. Hi, guys. down in there. There they are. So, there they are. All right, so in here we have four turkeys and two chickens. Now, the two chickens, I have a white rooster. One of the eggs was a, let's see, my rooster, my white rooster is a white leghorn. And I have a California white, which gives off a white coat with black dots. She lays white eggs. And then I have an Americana. Now, the, I gathered up five eggs. Four of them were white and one was green. So I knew it was the Americana. And out of the five, only these two hatched. And they're really, really gorgeous. I'm going to see if I can get a better view but as you can tell with the two chickens they are white with black spots that's the california white trait um and then we have one of our turkeys the one in the front there that's turning around it's going to be this one right here he is practically a white turkey so we're not sure how that happened. He's got very little gray on him. He's like a yellow white turkey. So let me see if I can get a better view or better picture for you guys. All right, just stay still guys. Gee whiz. So in this grow out, I think later today, we are going to go ahead and get the chickens out and put them with the baby, other baby chickens. Look at this, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. And then the turkeys need to grow a little bit more. There's the 
practically white turkey there. I think I'll name him Whitey. The other two are just... Everybody else is a barnyard mix, but... Aren't they pretty? All right, let's get on with the next chore. I guess Donald never locked the fence. <laughs> let's see if I still have all my ducks. Oh, I like, possibly get through there if they had to. All right, so this is my duck pen, as a lot of you know. Um, flags have been working great. I've only had one or two crows. Um, no more. I only had vultures that one time. And uh, so far, the crows are doing really good at staying away. The flags really help. That's the pig pen over there. So with the ducks, they have this house and looks like, no, no Iggy's. They've been um, nesting out here in the, um, where we tore down the trees. We just haven't cleaned it up yet, but hi, mama. Hi, mommy. You got Iggy for me? It's so cute because they do try to hide. A lot of them along the fence line. And then they got their pools over here. So in the mornings, I collect the duck eggs. Ducks lay first thing in the morning. And the chickens normally lay later on at night or in the day. Hi, mommy. Yes, mommy. Good, mama. Yes, I know. Um, for those that have, you know, wondered, yes, I have tried to let them hatch, but because of the crow problem, um, I don't anymore because they'll sit on the eggs for, I got one there, I got, I am not sure how in the world, that's a first, how did it get, I must have knocked it over, um, but the crows have, let me see if I can get it, oh, <laughs> But the crows would start eating the eggs after they've been sitting on them. The minute they get up, the crows were attacking them. So, no, none of my ducks will hatch out eggs until there's a better system. And yes, I do get at least six to seven eggs. A day and I am constantly giving eggs away so that's what I have for today seven eggs <clears throat> and I don't mean like I give them away away but I mainly give them to family and friends that need them want them buy them from me there's the duck ducks all of my ducks are pickings and I have one mallard. There's my mallard. I do have two groups. This group right here, these are my originals. This is the one where it's got anarchy, it's got afro. Where's the little afro? Afro is um, gone blind in one eye. And she's becoming a cranky old lady. <laughs> but she's doing well. And then over here, this is the new group that we got. Um, we've lost a few. The one in front, uh, the, we call, uh, the prior people called him Runt. 
we've just kind of kept the name his top bill is shorter than the uh, bottom bill but he gets around just fine or she gets around just fine gee whiz what is going on over there something going on with my chickens i better go see but um we are oh it is the hen laying song somebody must have laid an egg <laughs> but we are going to take the new chickens which is the two i just showed you in the brooder plus what i'm going to show you next and we're building a little coop house that they can roost in at night and, um, with shelter but this whole area the ducks are not eating this grass and the grass is getting tall so we are going to go ahead and put I think it's going to be a total of, I have five, seven chickens in here. I have one rooster. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and put them in here and uh, let them help eat up this grass for a little bit. And then we'll put them back, you know, so they'll be in here for a few weeks. All right. It's time to go see what the hens are doing. <laughs> all right so we are over by the bird aisle we got them all lined up along the fence here back towards our backyard and uh i have to be very careful i have to check i don't walk into spiders and spider webs like there's one there there's another one right here and I'll show you if she's still here. We have another huge orb weaver spider that's made up residence inside here. Uh, I just got to look. Yep, she's still there. Okay. So, this is our turkey, technically our turkey grow out area. The names change as we change the animals. We have two ducks that we um, hatched out this season. We have our goose, baby boy, and all of the turkeys that grew out. So before I show you them, they get noisy. Right over here, her web is already in my face, but that is our orb, we golden orb weaver spider. They are pretty chill spiders. They are not going to be like aggressive. They love to just hang and wait. But their their web, which you can't see, is all like a yellow golden color. So that's why they call them the golden orb weaver. And it looks like, yep, she's got a boyfriend. And as you know, the big the let me see if I can focus on him. Oop. Right there, at the very top, is the male. He's the smallest. There he is. And then that's the female. And it's funny because I've actually seen them mate. He'll like slowly massage her leg like he was petting it. They'll mate and then she eats them. I've actually seen it before. So. Here's the crew. Hi, guys. Hi. Now, the ducks. Everybody in here except for baby boy, the goose, is going to be meat for us later on in the season. What we're going to do is, the ducks are big enough, we're going to put, we have special bands, we're going to put a band on each one of these, and we're going to take the goose and the two ducks and put them out in the duck yard. 
um, just so that way they can eat. Oh my goodness. And that is definitely a male. I think I have actually, and this one's a female. That's the male. Um, but the, the two ducks and the goose is going to go back out with the others. And though the two ducks will live out their life. Hello! Hi guys! All of these turkeys will stay in here unless uh, unless we have issues with fighting or something. Look at that. Look at that. Already strutting. They were strutting when they were just a few days old. It's so cute. These turkeys have great personalities. But these are going to be our meat birds. Uh, this year we're going to go ahead and do turkey because we do love turkeys. Um, we buy ground turkey meat all the time. We buy turkey sausage. And they're pretty colors. A lot of them were mated with, I have a pair of gray slate and then I have a mixed pair but the first couple of uh, turkeys were a mixture of either the gray slate or the gray and the royal palm and you can tell like this one's got gorgeous black coloring you can see the black spots look at that little strut got the booty butt <clears throat> And then the last of the little babies are over there, except for what's in the pen. Here, baby boy. But they got a nice big room to roam around in, in this pen. Hi, guys. All right, now I'm going to show you the next set. All right, this is my barnyard crew. That's Callie, the California White. This is Stupid, our rooster. Oh, those crows are back. I have two um, Rhode Island Reds. I have two Sex Links. Yeah, the other one's in there. I can see her. And then I have one Americana. This is my original group. So, them two have babies and them two have babies. So, we'll see how they... <laughs> see how these guys grow up. But... Uh, this is their pen. It's right next to Turkey, so they got socialization. I made some type of twig tent thing. They've already eaten all the grass in here. Uh, but I do let them out, and we have this system as our door. It's just like a lean-to, and they know how to go in and out. And I hook it right there, and they're next to the gray slates. Now, the reason why there's a shade here is because Stupid and the male gray slate constantly fighting so we put this up so that way they can technically know they're there but they're not at each other's going after each other but this is my original group and i do let them out they are trained to the yard so i have no problems letting them out but because the weather is going to get pretty bad here later i'm just going to leave them inside but they do get all of our scraps we'll just toss them in here and I also give them scratch at the end of the day, too. All right, this pen here is for our breeding pair. These are both royal, or no, I'm sorry, gray slates. There's our Tom and our hen. Now I have to be careful. For some reason, the Tom has decided that he likes to attack me almost all the time I come in here. I have to come in here with a stick. Um, now, what I do is, um, if I have to come in here like for their water or to collect an egg because she's still laying technically, that's what I do. As you can tell, they're really nice, but the this turkey for some reason just has decided he does not like me. If he's strutting around in full strut, showing off, I have no problem. But when he's like this and he's making little cooey noises, 
that's when I know he's trying to attack me. That's the signs I have uh, developed with him. Let me back out. Um, but they got a little feeder. They got a little waterer. Holds them over for several days. And that's it for them. All right, these are my new chickens. I'm going to, uh, this one's a little bit harder because it's more of a lean-to, but it's attached here. And these guys are between my two turkey uh, pairs. But let me see if I can get in. Yeah, I know babies are actually, let me try something. Oh, yeah, that works. All right, the black one in front is a Coach and Moran. And we found out today, or a couple days ago, he is actually a rooster. So that is my rooster. And I do have a video of him crowing, so if he doesn't crow today, I'll put that in a video. The next one is an Americana and a, oh, uh, what, I can't remember them all. Darn it. I have one that's a mix. It's like a lake, it's like a, um. A leghorn cochin, I believe. And I think that's the white, the lighter color one. Then in the back, I have a blue Orpington. And then the one at the feeder is a blue sex link, which I was like really excited about. Didn't even know they had a blue sex link. And then there's my blue Orpington over there. I got the phone upside down, and I'm in a spider web too, so there she is. There she comes. But this is the group, along with the two in the brooder, that we're thinking about putting in the, in with the ducks. If not, if we decide not to, then I'll put my original chicken group in with the ducks. And then I can move these guys over to something a little bit bigger as they get bigger. But that's the chickens, the new ones at least, and they're doing well. Okay, and here is my other breeding pair. We got a bourbon red turkey, or tom, and then the female, the hen, is a royal palm. They get along great. His demeanor towards me is really friendly. He lets me pet him. He's a really nice Tom. Um, let me see if I can get the... <laughs> hey, Mrs. Turkey. But this is our other breeding pair. And I got, we have bird netting on top. So I'm trying to do this through the bird netting. There you go. But as you can tell, she's a royal palm. And so we're hoping uh, maybe next season when they start to breed again, that uh, we'll have very colorful babies from them. There she is. And the neighbor's dog. And he is constantly showing off for her. They're, they're getting along really well. Yeah, you proud, Mr. Tom, aren't you? Is that your lady? Yes, you're a pretty boy. All right, guys. So that is it for the morning chores. Um, and then if we wait until the afternoon... And uh, that's when we clean out the pools, check all the waterers, make sure everybody's got enough feed for the next couple of days. And uh, any eggs, we'll collect those. But that's pretty much it. 
that's the morning chores for us. Um, we got everything as you know self-efficient as possible, so we don't have to worry about anything. But if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And remember, grow something for your family. Bye, guys.